All right, listen, traders, I've got some good news for you, and I've got some bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? Okay, give me the bad news first. Want to hear the good news? What? All right, let's take a look at the good news first. Start off on a good note. The good news is that retail egg prices fell in February, which, oh my gosh, I don't know if you guys like to um, have eggs for breakfast, but man, the price of eggs has been crazy. Only the finest quality eggs will do for my dietary practice. Retail eggs prices fell in February, but the price drop may not last long. That's not as good news as I was hoping. At least for now, prices are falling a little bit on the egg market. Now let's get on to, unfortunately, some of the tougher news we have to talk about. Markets tumble, basically, this morning uh, on news of more bank difficulties, if you will. U.S. stocks opened sharply lower with the Dow falling more than 600 points following a sell-off in Europe amid ongoing concerns over the banking system. Credit Suisse hit a new record low after admitting it had found material weaknesses in its reporting and as the top shareholder ruled out any uh, further liquidity injections. Uh, Trading in Credit Suisse, uh, not sure how to say that Society, General, uh, and several Italian banks uh, was halted due to the steep losses. So mm, stock halts in Europe right now, of course, never what you wanna see in terms of uh, financial market optimism. Let's go take a look at the charts and see everything uh, post PPI and retail sales numbers that we got this morning as well. All right, guys, and we're taking a look now at the dollar index, which shot up this morning. Uh, mostly, you know, this is, this is a weird one, guys, and we're gonna go through this together. I'm gonna give you guys my take on this. It's a weird day uh, because right now what you have is you have the dollar rally though this morning numbers were not that high in fact we missed on retail sales numbers we missed on PPI numbers on core PPI numbers core retail sales it was what on a usual day would cause some dollar weakness right less than appealing economic numbers but instead today we see the dollar up tremendously on the fears surrounding the banking world potentially collapsing right uh, the dollar inherently uh, or notably is that is that safe haven currency if you will people buy it in times of fear so we're seeing the dollar catch a little bit of a bid here and finding support off this level now if you guys have been watching the channel you know I've had my eye on this level and it's cool to see it actually really holding as we expected. So a couple, couple bottoms put in there, uh, sort of a double, triple bottom sort of thing, and now breaking to the upside really, really strong. Let's go take a quick look at those numbers that we got this morning uh, as a recap. All right, guys, and here's a look at the numbers. Like I said, we had misses in several areas. You can see core PPI, 0%. Uh, core retail sales fell by 0.1%. Uh, a miss on the manufacturing index. PPI numbers less than impressive and retail sales. And still, despite all this negative capital catalyst for the dollar, we see the dollar up today. Again, it's a bit of a weird day in the markets. Not only that, you also have things like gold rallying really strong. And this brings me to something I wanted to talk about uh, with the gold chart. I'm actually looking to potentially get long on gold and I wanted to discuss uh, where we currently sit. So if we take a look purely uh, first off at price action, we can see we put in this low, we broke out decisively past resistance, that level became support. We never retested that zone, we just drifted higher and in the early hours here of the London session, found big buyers on the four hour chart, saw this ginormous candle uh, overtake the previous high. So everything here pointing towards, we could just dot this up as higher lows, higher highs, right? This is what we would call, generally speaking, from a price action standpoint, a bullish market off of the four hour chart. Now, when I drop it down to the one hour chart, I actually really like the idea of potentially getting involved on a retest of this broken level of resistance. Now, previously I was waiting for a deeper retracement, but with this explosion in price to the upside, things still look really strong. And I think a pullback on the gold chart actually could be quite strong here for continuation buys. It's something I'm looking at and have confirmation from our trading software where I wanna go over that here as we get into gold. So we get a plus five buy score. It's had a buy for the past week or so. And you can see that the score sentiment is plus five. COT data pointing towards heavily, heavily involved uh, institutional buying activity. If we take a look at retail sentiment, the crowd is shorting the gold market, which is a bullish signal. Uh, seasonality, the month of 
month. March historically is a positive month slightly for gold. There's an upward trend, which is pretty clear, and GDP and unemployment numbers favor more upside for the gold market according to the way that we analyze them. So overall, we get a plus five. This is a buy rating on the edge finder for the gold chart. And I wanna show you guys specifically something here that might be of interest to you, which is the retail sentiment tab. So as this, um, as this market gets strong, we'll pull up uh, commodities or we'll add that to the list here. If we take a look at the uh, the gold chart here, we have a 76% retail trader short interest. This is exceptionally interesting because again, when the retail crowd piles into a trade, when they think everything is going down, it's a red flag to try and get short ourselves. Now, not always, sometimes retail traders are correct, but again, an overextended move like this is very attractive. A lot of times traders will try and bet against it, thinking it couldn't possibly just keep going, which it totally could. I think the calculated play for me, like I said, is a pullback to something like the 38.2, which lines up nicely with past resistance, and then looking for continuations on the gold market. So uh, I do like that trade. I'm, I'm looking at it myself going into today's market action uh, and something that, that that I could see myself taking a trade on. Now, I am a US client, so I can't trade on US broker, uh, or Forex brokers to trade gold. I have to trade on a US broker, so I do use Weeble uh, for, for that. So if I'm looking at this thing, again, like I said, a pullback would be interesting. Uh, and it's backed up by the Edge Finder's data, which I really like. By the way, guys, if you want access to the Edge Finder, we do have free trials now available. If you'd like to do that, head over to a1trading.com. It's our website. And if you just type in the bottom right, there's a chat box here. If you type free free trial here. So just go free trial and just send that. One of our support reps, Drew, Emily, or Hallie, one of them will work with you to get you access to the Edge Finder for free to try it out. If that's something you're interested in, again, check out the uh, the website, a1trading.com, go to the chat icon and type free trial, and one of our support reps will help you to try out the software for yourself. Let's have a look at the S&P 500 and see the, uh, the aftermath here of all the craziness. Again, you can see with the Credit Suisse situation absolutely tanking the S&P 500 right back down to the lows. Now the question becomes, you know, we're stuck between two major levels on this chart. We have a key level of support below and we have a key level of resistance above. Which way is it going to go? Well, I think that the this uh, the directional bias right now is a bit unclear in the short term, though we still have an, uh, a pretty strong downward trend to overcome. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. You have this downward trend going on on the S&P 500 and I'd be very weary of breakouts to the downside, retests and continuations. If this comes into play, again, like I said, that is a sell side continuation bias. If anything, I believe the edge finder right now is pretty bearish on the S&P and NASDAQ. Um, not particularly trades that I like too short. I don't like to trade these things on the short side. However, uh, you know, I have to pay attention to that if I'm thinking about longs, I have to be very cautious not to jump into longs considering we are, uh, again, um, in a downward market overall. Uh, again, quite contrary to the gold idea that I shared, which I am bullish on, uh, we'll see if we can catch some pullbacks in the meantime on that gold chart. Um, again, we already talked a little about the dollar. Here's a look at the NASDAQ, as we mentioned, um, the NASDAQ moving similar to the S&P. And very notably, guys, the S&P underperforming the NASDAQ in this environment. That's something we've got to talk about. Because if you think about it, the NASDAQ is the higher risk, it's the tech stocks, it's the Teslas, it's the, um, you know, it, it's the higher risk technology stocks. This, if the market is really fearful, should be absolutely underperforming the S&P 500, which is comprised of, uh, you know, things that are more balanced, like, uh, you know, consumer staples, uh, Costco's and Walmart's and things like that, right? So usually we would expect the S&P 500 to be outperforming in a fearful market environment. So kind of a little bit of an interesting thing there to keep in mind is that despite all the bank fears, um, the S&P 500 underperforming the NASDAQ is quite interesting uh, to pay attention to. Just a little index stuff. You guys know I love my indices. I don't I don't trade them uh, a lot recently due to the fact that again they're in bearish trends right now. But once they start popping up, you can you can uh, bet a nickel on the fact I will probably be um, 
uh, looking to get long on them again. So waiting for that signal to produce itself. Let's take a look now at dollar yen. I've been bullish on dollar yen recently and uh, man, it came down and tested this level here, uh, beautifully finding some support. Again, it's too early to tell if this is truly going to hold. We'll be watching this 132.4 level. If we can get some sort of rally going, uh, perhaps erase some of these massive drop off losses uh, that happened in the previous uh, session. Again, this New York session starting out somewhat bullish for uh, the dollar yen, despite some of the weak numbers that we got out of the um, the US here today, uh, retail sales PPI. Now, one thing that's really interesting, like I said, is there's some correlation going on right now with the USD JPY and the stock market. Uh, an unusual correlation. Sometimes it's inverse, sometimes it's correlated. And in fact, we could do that study together here. I'll show you guys if we go correlation coefficient, which is one of my favorite indicators to play around with. And it's not even on my thing. Where did it go? I know I had one correlation coefficient. I'm not sure why this is not one of my favorites, but it's one of my favorites now. Um, so if I go here, I'm looking at the dollar yen, I want to compare it to the S&P 500 USD. Let's do Wanda's version, apply it. And this shows us guys, um, the correlation between the two and a very notable, uh, interesting little thing. Where did it go? Am I looking at this thing completely wrong? There it is. Okay. So we can kind of see the correlation, which oscillates between one and negative one. Uh, the strongest, of course, uh, if things are negatively in correlated, we would expect dollar yen to go up, S&P down and vice versa. Right now we're shifting back into some level of positive correlation between the two, which I thought was kind of interesting data uh, to pay attention to. Now, I want to show you guys one thing about the euro. The, the euro, a lot of you guys trade the euro USD. The euro sold off a cliff recently. And if you guys remember, a lot of you guys may remember that in the past days, we've discussed the euro as one of the favorite retail trader shorts. A lot of silent, uh, a lot of people staying real quiet when they realize that retail traders can be right sometimes. It's weird to say, but retail traders can actually be right about some of their trades. And you can see Euro dollar retail traders at this time were very much selling this market, but they're not the only ones. Institutional money it was as well. I'll show you that in just a second. I've got so much data for you guys uh, to show you today. I'm, I'm just, the markets are crazy. Euro USD, like I said, um, the retail traders were short. So was big money. Institutional and retail actually agreed. And we saw this thing fall out of the sky. Now though, now things have shifted. Institutional money is still short biased as of the latest data that we have, but it, retail traders are long. You can see Euro USD 86%, they flipped sides. The Euro dollar is now a buy according to retail traders. A very interesting thing indeed. Now let's take a look guys at that smart money tracker. And this is what I wanted to show you. The Euro is heavily bought by institutional money. And so they're still um, sort of interested there. And then we have the US dollar, which is also heavily bought by institutional data. So not a super strong preference, I guess, by institutional traders, but it's a curious thing to see that retail traders are now very long biased on this chart. Something very much to pay attention to going into uh, the rest of the week and even into next week. If Euro dollar can break through the lows, I think you have some break and retest moves that could continue uh, with this dollar strength that's coming in as markets are very fearful right now. Um, uh, about the sort of Credit Suisse stuff and uh, people mo moving to cash and that sort of stuff. A whole bunch of things, guys. Remember, if you want access to our data, check it out on the website. Head over to a1trading.com and chat with one of us. You can see it pops up with this little prompt. Just type free trial or edge finder access and one of our support reps will help you out to get access to the data that I use every day to find the trade setups that I do. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your trading day. Before you go, make sure to check out our free Discord channel linked down below in the description. And if you want to try out some of our products, our software tools here at A1 Trading, we have free versions available also down below in the description. Check them out for yourself down below. Also, if you enjoy our content here, we work really hard behind the scenes to bring this content to you each and every day. And if you enjoy our content, it would mean a lot to us if you hit the thumbs up button before you head out. Thanks for watching.